Imagine signing a job contract to work in a place so dangerous and expensive to get to that the first thing your new employer does is charge you a billion dollars for the privilege. Welcome to the Lynx Corporation. Now get to work. That debt isn't going to pay itself off. Welcome to Night's Arcade, I'm Sleepless Night, and today I'm looking at Hard Space Shipbreaker, a zero-gravity, hazardous job simulator from the developers behind Homeworld Deserts of Karak and the upcoming Homeworld 3. Blackbird Interactive's new game is currently in Steam Early Access and is essentially a first-person zero-g puzzle game, but it's kinda hard to narrow this game down to a specific genre since I'm not sure I've really seen anything quite like it before. You're working for the Lynx Corporation, salvaging derelict spacecraft by cutting them into pieces in the hopes of repaying the billion dollar debt Lynx lumped you with for the privilege of bringing you here to work for them in the first place. Always read the fine print. I mean, it's cool, right? I love zero-g environments in games and suffer from the gleeful childish belief that a really shitty job in space is better than pretty much any job that is not in space. And on this job, you get to use super cool laser cutting tools that make the Jedi look like butter knife wielding wizards. All this sci-fi tech and a student flat in space. This should be easy, right? Yeah, you don't want to do that. I mean, sure, you owe a billion dollars, but you can make over a million dollars on a single shift at this job, so pretty soon you'll be raking it in. Well, not exactly. You see, we're in the future. A future you'll soon learn from data drives you can find amongst the detritus of derelict chip hulls has some conspicuously dystopian characteristics. Every dystopian future, as we know, needs an evil mega-corporation, and it turns out you're working for one. They are in this to make money, after all. Don't hate the player, hate the game. At the end of every shift, Lynx will present you with a bill to be deducted from the day's earnings. This includes everything from the rental of equipment needed to do this job in the first place, to the clones you'll require following those inevitable workplace mishaps, and even, quite literally, the air that you breathe. Yeah, there's not really a lot of oxygen up here, so they can charge you for that. And what are you going to do? Hold your breath until you've paid off a billion dollar debt? Injury detected. So, once you've bent over and accepted your lot and learned never to sign anything again whilst hungover or extremely naive, you can get to work chopping up ships. In space! But of course, nothing in this game is that simple. This isn't like cutting up a cardboard box to fit it in the garbage and trying not to scratch yourself on the staples. These are spacecraft. Most of them are still pressurised, and behind those rusting hulls you so desperately want to slice straight into are fuel lines, air pockets, power cells, flammable materials, liquid nitrogen and nuclear reactors. All these things need to be separated from all the other things and disposed of safely in the right place. So take your time. But not too much of it, because every shift costs you roughly half a million dollars in expenses. I'm probably making this sound like the worst job in the world right now, aren't I? But this job isn't in this world. It's in space! Okay, I'll stop now. Because the truth is, despite the clunky and unfortunate title and all the other horrible things I just mentioned, Hard Space Shipbreaker is one of the most addictive games I've played in years. It's one of those games where you look up after what feels like five minutes to find your partner has left you for someone else and had children, who are now starting college. It is somehow crazily immersive to hang above a huge planet finding your way about old spacecraft hulls full of litter and marked by years of service to figure out the safest and quickest way of cutting them into pieces with a deadly laser power tool and flinging bits off into a furnace the size of an office block. Sound design always helps me with immersion in video games and this is another stellar example. 
From Ben McCullough's soundtrack, which is beautifully evocative of Joss Whedon's Firefly, to the satisfying powering up and cutting sounds of your tools, and the subtle muffled sounds you get through your suit as you graze against the inside of a ship's crawl space. Tiny little details like the employment form you must fill in at the start of the game and the different licenses you can start your cutter career with add in tiny increments to the world Blackbird Interactive are creating here. If you hit your head or are exposed to an electrical discharge, your helmet will most likely malfunction, affecting your vision and messing up the audio until you purchase or find a repair kit and give it a few craftsman-like tweaks. The licenses represent the game's difficulty levels, ranging from open shift with no timers and unlimited clones, all the way to permadeath for those wanting the authentic shipyard space slave experience. At the end of each shift, you'll return to your habitation unit, which is one of the things I'm hoping they let you see more of and perhaps customise a little in later updates. Here, at the beginning of your next day's shift, you can view your objectives, you can purchase upgrades for your tools and equipment, perhaps even work your way up to owning some of the equipment as you gain experience and increase your certification level, but this is also where you will decide which ships to work on based on scrap value versus estimated time to complete the job. If, like me, you have a tendency to become a little too immersed in these sorts of roles, you'll probably start out trying to salvage every single component until the shipyard is completely free of floating junk. Game or no game, I accidentally allowed a half-cut metal frame to go spinning out of the shipyard towards the atmosphere, and thought to myself in my naive rookie way, oh better get that, it'll have someone's eye out. So off I went, jetting off out of the shipyard to fetch it. But the phrase, I don't get paid enough for that shit, could have been written for this game. The sweepings up from this job could fund a third world country's dental plan, or cause explosive decompression in the labour ward of an orbiting hospital. But you're not a janitor, and it pays, quite literally, to leave the niceties in the real world and start thinking like a cutter. Salvage as much of the expensive stuff as you can, as quickly and as safely as you can, and punch the clock for the day. Removing those lights one by one might satiate your perfectionist impulses, but each one of those lights is worth about enough to buy a tube of toothpaste for your space apartment whereas the 20 seconds you spent removing it cost you more than a year of college. It really is worthwhile, if you're ever going to pay off your debt, learning what is worth your time and what isn't. Hard Space Shipbreaker gets a huge thumbs up from me so far, and this, according to the developers, is only Act 1. Their early access roadmap is to add new ship classes, tool upgrades, game modes, challenges, and many other things in future updates. There are things that could be tweaked and added here and there, and one or two of the more tedious aspects could do with removing or streamlining, but overall this is a unique experience I hope to continue with for a long time. Shipbreaker is currently in Steam Early Access, with plans to release on consoles sometime in the future. I highly recommend you check it out if you have the time and the funds. I will be playing a little of it here on the YouTube channel over the coming weeks, and who knows what its future is here at the arcade. That's all from me. You can follow me on Twitter at Knights underscore Arcade if you'd like to join in conversations about this and other upcoming games. If you want to check out my live streams and chat with myself and my community in there, I stream every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday, and you can find the link to my Twitch channel in the video description or on my channel header, along with links to the Knights Arcade Discord, Patreon and Facebook pages. And if you don't want to do any of that, but you like this video, leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more from me in the future, and ring the bell to be notified every time I post new content. But until next time, from Night's Arcade, this is Sleepless Night, saying nighty night. Alright, Cutter, you ready to perform a little zero-g ship surgery?